When you decide to buy a server, there is lots of technical specifications that you have to deal with. In this video, I will talk about the three not so technical things that you should know when buying a server. These are how do servers look, what do these server names mean and what buying options do you have. Let's get started. How a server looks from the outside is called its form factor. So knowing the form factor will give you an estimation of the size and shape of a server. Servers typically come in three form factors. They could be tower servers, rack servers or blade servers. Now we will take a look at each of them. You would generally call standing up servers as tower servers. They look similar to what you might have seen in your desktop PCs only that these are slightly larger. The lying down servers are called rack servers and they are designed to be kept inside racks. Though you can keep them wherever you want. If you so decide you can slide it under your TV stand and they should work just fine. Now since these servers are designed for racks, the size of these servers is specified in terms of rack units or the amount of vertical space the server occupies inside the rack. A standard rack is always 19 inches wide. So the rack unit actually indicates the height of the server. When you say a server is one rack unit or one RU, it means that the height of the server is 1.75 inches. A two RU server is likewise 1.75 times two, which is 3.5 inches. I know it's a strange way to measure height, that's probably why you will find the rack unit in the Wikipedia page for list of unusual units of measurement. When talking about rack servers, I wanted to quickly talk about server noise. Just to clarify, it's not the entire server, but mainly the cooling fans that cause the noise. The popular opinion is that rack servers are noisier than their tower counterparts. If you look at it, uh, definitely in a rack server, the components are packed more densely than in a tower. So the fans have to do a bit more work when it comes to cooling a rack server. Likewise, if you compare a 1RU and a 2RU server, the 1RU will have components packed more densely because the available space is less and therefore it might need more cooling. Lastly, we will look at blade servers. By the looks of it, the blade server is quite sleek, right? But uh, one thing you have to remember is that if you get a blade server, then it's mandatory that you have a blade enclosure with you. It's not like a rack server where you can slide it anywhere there is space. Blade servers can only be run from compatible blade enclosures. So compatible is the keyword here. This is because the blade enclosure provides features like power, networking and cooling to all the blade servers that you slide into the enclosure. So that's about a blade servers. So in summary, the form factor tells you how the server looks. Now that we have understood form factor, let's go ahead and look at server names and what they mean. The name of the server actually tells you a few things about the CPU, the supported hardware and the expansion capabilities of the server. In fact, the form factor is also usually specified as part of the server name. So let's take an example of couple of server names and understand what they mean. I'm going to be taking two brands that I have frequently come across, HP ProLiant and Dell PowerEdge. Okay, let's start with HP ProLiant. An example of a server name would be HP ProLiant DL380 G7. I know it sounds a mouthful, but uh, let's take a look at what it means. So HP is the company, ProLiant is the brand, DL380 is the model and G7 is the generation. The company and the brand are self-explanatory. So let's start with DL. So DL stands for density line, which is another name for a general purpose rack mountable server. Proliant also has other product lines like ML, SL, BL and micro servers. All these basically indicate the form factor of the server. Moving on, let's understand this 380. To do that, let's break it down into three constituent numbers, 300, 80 and zero. I know that's a weird way of splitting it up, but I'll clarify that in a moment. 300 is the series. The series in this case 
indicates the number of processor sockets supported by the server. In case of HP ProLiant, the 300 series supports up to two processor sockets, meaning you can have up to two physical CPUs on that server. ProLiant also has a 500 series that can support up to four processor sockets and a 900 series supporting up to eight sockets. There are also other series of ProLiant servers, but I just used these three to give you an idea. The next part of the server name, which is 80, is a variation within the 300 series. In the 300 series, we actually have four variants, 320, 360, 370, and 380. So you might have this question as to what's the difference between these variants. Usually it has some simple differences in terms of the hardware, here you can see a side-by-side -side comparison of DL360 and DL380 models. It's largely the same, except for some changes in hard disk support and upgradability. I'll give all these links in the video description uh, in case you want to refer. The last digit indicates the processor type. So if the last digit is 0, it means that the server uses Intel processors. If the last digit is a 5, then the server uses AMD processors. So even if other parts of the model name seem complicated, you can simply look at the last digit and say whether the server has an Intel or an AMD CPU. The last part of the server name is the generation. Like human beings, server models also tend to evolve over time. An improvement within the same server model is called a generation. For example, the HP ProLiant DL380 is currently in its 10th generation. The first generation of DL380 came out in the 1990s. It had two Intel 3 Pentium processors and it could support only up to 4 gigs of RAM. The 10th generation of DL380, however, can support up to 4 terabytes of RAM and has Intel Xeon processors that can go up to 28 cores. So when buying a server, make sure to look at the generation to which it belongs. Otherwise, you might end up getting a very old one. If you are interested in understanding the idea of generations in a better way, you can refer to this link that explains the different generations of DL380. Now let's move on to the second example, Dell PowerEdge R710. Again Dell is the company, PowerEdge is the brand, R stands for Rack Server. So in case of Dell, the first digit is indicative of the number of CPU sockets. I'll quickly put up this table that shows the mapping between the first digit and the number of CPU sockets. In our case, the first digit is 7, which means the server supports two CPU sockets. The second digit refers to the generation. So 0 means 10th generation, 1 means 11th generation and so on. The last digit, like HP ProLiant, indicates the CPU manufacturer. Uh, one thing to note is that these are just examples and naming conventions are not set in stone, so they can change over time. It's best you refer to the manufacturer's website to understand what a particular server model offers. The idea here has been to highlight that names are not just a bunch of random characters, but they actually have a meaning. Lastly, let's look at the buying options you have. When you're looking to buy a server, you basically have four options, new, refurbished, used or sold for parts. Let's take a look at each one of these. Now, new servers are the costliest of the lot. You go for new servers when you want the latest technology out there and also when you favor reliability over cost. For example, when you want to host a bunch of critical services on the server, any downtime has significant impact on your business, right? In these cases, you might want to get a new server and also have three to five year support contract with the vendor. This will ensure quick availability of any failed components and on-site support if you run into any issues. Also, as an example, if you take HP, as a vendor, they provide firmware updates only if you have a support contract with them. On the flip side, new servers are significantly costlier than used ones and they come with minimal add-ons in terms of RAM, storage and so on. So all these will be an additional expense for you. For a home lab, new servers might be an overkill. A much cheaper option for you would be to go for what you would call as refurbished servers. 
a refurbished server has had at least one owner prior to you rarely there might be new servers which have been assembled and later if the customer cancels the order they get sold as refurbished servers during refurbishing the seller will ensure that the server is ready to deploy elsewhere typically they will clean the server test the components ensure that the firmware is updated and leave everything at its factory defaults refurbished servers also come with a warranty from the seller which you can buy optionally i would recommend getting a minimal warranty because if you are buying a old server model then you might find yourself hunting for parts online if you don't have a warranty even though refurbished servers have a lower shelf life than the new ones they do offer a huge cost advantage and when you buy them from reputable sellers you do get reliable hardware and good support the third buying option you have is used servers so these are servers that are sold as is and usually have no refurbishment and they come with no guarantee for example if you are an individual user and want to sell off one of your servers chances are you will just go ahead and sell it right you might not bother to do a full functional test before selling it when buying used servers you are pretty much on your own of course you might get a 30 day money back guarantee from ebay but that's all it's going to be for this reason used servers will usually be cheaper than a refurbished server of the same model now the last buying option is where you don't buy the server but you buy only the parts this is for people who want to build their own server or people who are looking for upgrades to their existing equipment in the context of buying servers i wanted to talk about lab gopher so this is a site that uses the ebay api and adds some machine learning on top of it in an attempt to give you the best server deals on ebay you can basically filter by brand size and a few other essential parameters and see if you can get a good deal it's not an exhaustive listing of stuff you find on ebay but it's a good place to start if you're buying a server with that we come to the end of this video we started by understanding form factor and looked at three form factors towers blades and racks we then moved on and saw that server names have a meaning and they can tell you about the configuration of the server lastly we looked at the four buying options and did a brief comparison between them hope this was useful thanks for watching